what I understand is that the four B's means the four no's. And so they're saying basically no sex, no babies, no marriage, um, no participation in this cycle of subjugation of women. In this podcast episode, I'm lucky enough to be joined by marriage and family therapist, Crystal DeSantis. Third Mind Matters, helping men to safely navigate family life without losing their minds. Lived experience podcasts about mental health, parenting and marriage on a Monday, Wednesday and Friday. So I've been doing some research on it and it's really interesting because the 4B movement is a very small movement out of South Korea. So for people who might not be familiar with it, it's basically a very small movement of women and their supportive allies, but it came from a book. And in the book, she talks about these four, four Bs. What I understand is that the four Bs means the four no's. And so they're saying basically no sex, no babies, no marriage, um, no participation in this cycle of subjugation of women. Yeah. Which catchy, it's very catchy. Um, and I think it speaks to a deeper need. Yeah, I I did a bit Go of ahead. research myself. And actually, I think what I hope is that men will shelve their ego and actually li- research the topic. Because I, I listened to some really good analogies. And it's very much, mm-hmm. don't hate the player, mm-hmm. hate the game. Exactly. And what exactly. I really like is actually, and maybe it just resonates more because I've got a daughter and I've got sons. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, that it's absolutely clear that it's it's not equal. It's not gender equality in the world. They just did, and that's wrong. And actually, instead of seeing it as a threat, I think men could say this can empower us to make it right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, I'm really glad that you brought this topic to my attention. And well, I've been seeing it, but I'm glad that you're you're wanting to engage with this, especially as a dad. Because that's really what I see, especially like I mentioned in our little first text exchange, is South Korean culture is not this culture, right? It's not Western culture. There is still a very deep tradition that relies on women doing the bulk of the homemaking, the caretaking, the child rearing, and that's how the society is set up, right? And so I think that's really what this speaks to is not just about we don't want to engage with men. It's, you know, the whole society needs to change because there are people that are like, oh, the 4B movement is responsible for the falling birth rates. No, it's not. (laughs) The birth rates in South Korea have been falling for a long time. Yeah. And in Japan as well, which is a very similar, which is where I grew up, which is a similar, it's the economic factors that people and it's so interesting because from the outside looking in you're they might say like well they've got good health care they've got you know benefits for having children you get like a child bearing stipend but it is very interesting from the outside looking in it looks very family oriented but a lot of that is dependent on women giving up their careers to do that work or if they if financially it's not viable to have a single income family the women still do all the work at home And it's not set up as a society to be an equal partnership. Yeah, that's not fair, is it? And I think maybe in Britain and in and the US, maybe there is more equality. If you look at my scenario, my wife is more really the 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 breadwinner. I do the majority Mm -hmm. of the childcare. And it's Mm -hmm. not just I should be going out because I'm the man, the breadwinner. That's ridiculous. Her job Mm -hmm. earns forty percent more than yours. So actually, Mm -hmm. if you're running your family like a business, that would be really bad Mm -hmm. sense. So Absolutely. I think as opposed to, because I think I've seen a lot of comments and uh, sadly, the women who've been brave enough to, to highlight this have just got lots of abuse, which is a shame. Oh. And it mm-hmm. just actually shows it's lots of, lots of small minded men who haven't researched the topic. Yep. And they're taking this as a threat against them as men saying, well, you don't want men mm-hmm. anymore. But no, that's not what they're saying. They're saying mm-hmm. we want the rules to be fair, which is really I think what most people want. Mm -hmm. And I think this is also, it's deeper than just, and I think this is the call to action of society needs to change. If people, even in America, where they're talking about, we need, I mean, outlawing abortion and all of that, but really there's this concern that women don't want to have children anymore, or people don't want to have kids. 
And you have children. It's hard. It's really hard work. And also there's a societal thing of the reality economically is that most families today need two incomes, Yeah. right? Unless one person is an incredibly high earner in general, like kids are expensive as well, right? So the reality is most homes are going to be two parent working homes. But then if the division of labor in the home is not set up to be equal, which is as simple as, let's say, like you said, in America or maybe in Britain, there is a little bit more acceptance that a dad could be a primary parent. Yeah. But I bet you've faced a lot of uphill battles of, oh, the school's going to send your wife the memo before they send it to you and you have to consistently Absolutely. And also right? the slight, and this might be my insecurity, the slight potential feeling of, when I go, when I'm one of the only dads dropping my kids off at school, you think, and this might be purely my paranoia that the mothers are going, that, 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 that doesn't work. And that might be all on me. I think the bottom line is it, 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 the world is not fair for men and women. That's just a fact. Mm-hmm. The people we need to be not attacking, the people we need to be questioning are the mm-hmm. people who are making life so difficult that, uh, that mm-hmm. the two mm-hmm. adults have to work. Exactly. It's so expensive. The gulf between the haves and the have-nots. That's those are the people. Massive corporations that don't pay any tax. It's that great analogy. If you put a jam jar full of red ants and black ants, they're absolutely fine. But then if someone shakes the, it's we shouldn't be fighting with each other. We should be working together to go. Hang on a minute. Mm -hmm. Actually, the woman who raises this is not the problem. Mm -hmm. It's a Mm -hmm. much much bigger problem. Absolutely. Because honestly, I've heard a lot of this from men as well. So I've, in America, I work with lots of couples that are in their maybe early 30s or in their late 20s. They're getting married. They want to start a family, but then they start looking at their finances and they start looking at the reality of what that would take. And they go from maybe the dream, because I hear this from a lot of men too, where they have the dream of like, I want three or four kids. I want to give them a beautiful childhood. I want to take them to national parks. I want to take them on road trips. I want to take them camping. I want to do the things that I got to experience as a kid. And it's, well, that costs a lot more now. And the reality that maybe, let's say, you grew up with, which is your, you did have a stay-at-home parent who was able to keep the home fires burning, or maybe she had a part-time job, or maybe she went back to work after the kids got a little bit older. Like the what that would actually cost this, like in this time and age is really not necessarily financially viable. And I noticed a lot of couples who want children, but say, we just can't afford it. And that's really sad. You shouldn't be mm-hmm. held to ransom over your want to have a family. But I think you're right. Mm-hmm. My dad went to work and my mum did all, I'll be honest, the, the, the much harder job of bringing mm-hmm. up the children. And But there's no way that we could afford. The numbers just don't add up. I really hope you got something from this podcast. And if you're going through or have gone through a mental health issue and you found a way to make your life slightly easier and you want to share that story, please contact me. And I know it's a massive ask because no one's got any spare time, but I'm really trying to get this podcast out there. So if you have two minutes to leave me a review on Apple Podcast or Spotify, that would be hugely appreciated. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care of yourself. My book, First Time Dad, A 42-Week Guide to Pregnancy, is available in Kindle and paperback form on Amazon and an audiobook form on Audible. To sign up for my monthly newsletter, please visit my website, www.dadmindmatters.com.